says when a user has left an organization and their mailbox has been converted to a shared mailbox and their license removed, can their account then be deleted? They're currently showing in the active users list, but obviously are no longer active. If you're referring to active directory, which should be about the only place they would still appear. Yes, when you convert a mailbox from a, a user mailbox to a shared mailbox, it's a shared mailbox. It's not their mailbox anymore. So um, yes. Yeah. So if you're looking at to looking at it from a user perspective and it says that it's a user mailbox, yes, it can be deleted. If you're looking in Exchange as a whole, it will tell you a category of what type of mailbox it is. User, shared, et cetera, right? So um, uh, if you have one account that says that's a shared mailbox, that's the one you do not delete, right? The one that says that's actually the user mailbox, that one's fleeing free and clear because technically it shouldn't still exist because it is migrated to a shared mailbox. So the mailbox Precisely. should be fine, but then once you can confirm that it is shared, go over to the user. If they've got other licenses, yes, you can then remove those licenses from that user. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And then the shared mailbox will still be there. You got Indeed it. it will. Because shared mail mailboxes do not need licenses. Just need permissions. Indeed. So are there any scenarios where removing the user licenses and then that the shared mailbox, like something malfunctions or it disappears? Is there any scenario where that could happen? Well, it is Microsoft. <laughs> that, whoa, whoa, and it is exchange. Whoa. So well, be nice. Come well, on. That was her outside voice, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just like Sorry. Teams is Teams, things can happen in Teams. Yeah. Things, they don't happen, can, don't, things can happen. Don't normally happen with Exchange. Exchange is a pretty robust but. and mature product, but. Thank you. Um, but also, also <laughs> keep in mind, in any scenario, you should always have a backup or store recovery system. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So um, in the transition, which which is built in to take a mailbox from a mailbox and convert it to a shared mail mailbox is a built-in process, right? You do that and you get a success. I've seen successes and everything looks like it's great. And then when you go to access, there's a problem, whatnot. Well, you can't go back to the mailbox because it was converted to a shared mailbox. The only thing that you have to go back to is the actual backup or store method that you have within your organization. If you do not have one, then you darn well better be looking into one because please do not depend on Microsoft for that because Microsoft will tell you there is limitations to their backup and restore functionality. That Isn't is it well funny. I, I just sorry, I'm just going to make a commentary here. Isn't it funny how uh, you know Microsoft for years telling customers because the third parties have been in this space for you know for 20 years uh, and that Microsoft you know salespeople were actively work against the the ISV partners and say you don't need to have the backup and we provide all of that and and so suddenly Microsoft makes an investment in one backup company and suddenly everybody is now coming to the light and Microsoft sellers are uh, aware that yes Gartner Forrester and every other analyst firm out there telling you you need to have a backup recovery yeah. solution in place that you oh. should not rely on the out of the box. I, and I don't know if I was being, I don't know, jaded by all this years. I don't know, right? But when Microsoft told me, he's like, oh, hey, we backed this stuff up. I'm like, no, right? I was like, mm, I'm sure there's caveats to it. There's a process to it and all that stuff. And if I need to restore and I need it right now, I guarantee you I'm not going to be able to get it, right? So do you want – you? please don't tell Microsoft I did this, but do you guys know how I vetted their system, a uh, backup restore? I submitted a false ticket. Oops. I said, I need this site restored right now, this date, this time, et cetera, right? And do you guys want to know, like, the feedback that I got, 
when I was doing this was I need a business case as to why. Is it in the recycle bin? Is it here? Have you done this? Have you done that? And they made me fill out an entire thing of my business case, why I needed this restore. And then once that piece got approved, then they said, okay, yeah. we're initiating that to another team. So then it goes to another team's queue. And then you wait in that queue for your restore. You are not notified when they do that restore. My they God. do oh it. And that restore has to be in the same exact place that it was. You can't say put it in this new location. It has to go on top of that exact site. So which means at the time that you submit, uh, you submit your restore request, you have to, and hopefully someone let you know ASAP, which if you think about the recycle bin, you go, what, 60, 90 days or whatever that's held in there that they can restore from. If you know exactly when something was deleted and it's not in there, then you submit that ticket. That site needs to go to read only because any changes that were made after that fact or during that time are going to be overwritten as soon as they do that restore. Wow. It caused just as much, if not a bigger problem than what you're trying to fix. Exactly. Yeah. So not a viable solution unless it's a, hey, we don't care if we have to go back 60, 90 days to get the information. That's the only that's the only thing that it will help you with. Other than that, you better have a third party solution in place, backing up your data every single day so that you can get that in on point res restorations that you need if something goes wrong, period. Yep. Interesting. Well, one flag I want to throw on the shared mailbox is, you know, you have retention policies. Each company may purge their mail at certain points in time. So you want to make sure that you know, even though you're not you're not depending on historical information out of somebody's shared mailbox if they've left, if your company is actually purging them periodically based on their policies. So, well, it depends if they're purging or if they're actually doing a an archive, right? Because they have in a mailbox they have recoverable data, right? So if they're think about a legal hold. Right. And a legal hold, they're turning it into a shared mailbox. You take anything that's active and whatnot and you put it in there. But then you also have to go to the recoverable mailbox area and restore all that to inside of that shared mailbox. So it's a multi tiered situation in any type of those restores or migrations that you have to do. But someone has to give you the proper information. And Sherry, you know as well as I do, because I feel that like that's coming from the same project, <laughs> right? <laughs> if they don't provide us that information, we don't know that there's recoverable data because yeah. they've just told us to turn this user into a shared mailbox, right? They've not told us it was a legal hold user or any of that stuff, so we have to go get that recoverable data. So ask a lot of questions, get a lot of answers, then initiate that go button.